Okay, it is lunchtime, and I have got myself a delicious bowl of Campbell's chicken noodle soup. I love chicken noodle soup. I've had it all my life, and it's good stuff. I know some people think it's terrible and all the rest, and maybe it is. I don't know, but I sure love it. And I try to have it a couple of days a week for my lunch, and normally... I, well, I got a bunch of crackers in there. You can see that. Just regular old saltines. And uh, normally I would have something more with this, like a salad, which I can't have today because I have ran out of lettuce. Ran out of a couple of things because I haven't been able to go to the store and so forth and so on. Or I'd have like a half a grilled turkey and cheese sandwich. Um, I have that occasionally, but I don't really feel much like it. I'm still a little sick, but I'm sure feeling a whole lot better today. A whole lot better, and I'm really glad that I'm on the mend. So anyway, we're looking at a live camera over here. This is about 80 miles from me. It's up in the mountains, and that's a house there. And you probably can't really see that with the GoPro. But that's a house, and that's about... 12 feet of snow. That's how deep it gets, high in the mountains. This is this is probably close to 9,000 feet in elevation, where I'm not that high here. So anyway, we can get some snow, but it's kind of rare. And over here on this screen, on the main computer, I am Driver watching. Driver has to concentrate all his attention to. A documentary. This is Deadliest Roads, China, The Valley of Forgotten People free documentary. It's a channel I'm subscribed to and it's pretty good stuff. So we're just going to watch that and eat our bowl of soup. It's pretty long. They're, um, they're usually about an hour long. Anyway, they're just following these people along on the journey. Control of the vehicle. So Let's have lunch. Of the it's really hot. <clears throat> Towels and napkins. What was that? Something fell off. Have a look. This is in China, of course, so in these Oh, it was a pig. Oh, I know they're carrying this pig. What are we gonna do? Up there. Put it inside the car. Oh, no way. No pigs inside my taxi. Yeah. Give it to me, gently. Huh. That's his prized pig that he's taken back to China. He started in Burma. Wait. Hey, look at your animal. It's bleeding. I wonder what happened. Oh, he. The pig did indeed injure itself when it fell. Oh. Not too bad. It's all the bumps. He's a bit worse for wear. Uh, will he be all right? Yeah, yeah. Not too bad. Mm. I forgot my glass of milk. I need to go get my glass of milk. And just like that, I got my glass of milk. Mm. Unfortunately, there's quite a few ads here. Long mouse. The houses built for the poor are just at the entrance to Fong's village. That's more crackers the in there. The taxi has taken 15 hours to cover the 80 kilometer route. The journey that should take just six hours. Happy to have made it? Please, yes, uh, but I'm full of aches and pains. Mmm. So delicious. I try to keep the lunch kind of small. It's almost empty. 
Here's the hole where the petrol came out. Oh, he lost oh, his gas. that serious? Well, I can't fill my motorbike now. Cheng, disappointed, decides to give what's left of the petrol away for free. But a 15-hour journey has at least earned him 100 yen per passenger, a total equivalent to 60 euros, which is decent money. How's the pig doing? Oh, he's all right, my pig. He just needs to rest, a bit of treatment, and he'll be fine. Anyway, um, I try to eat a small lunch so that I won't, so I will have room for my dinner. And I have my dinner pretty early, but then I end up just going to bed right afterwards, and I know that's not good, but... Would you like a nice hot potato? Get out, shoot. It's really hot. The past. So I talked about the the fact that I don't the use my heat. I actually turned it up a little bit so I was able to take my jacket off. During the 1940s, and, um, the region was under Tibetan domination. I, uh, so I keep it low because it's really expensive. When I moved into this place, I thought it had a heat pump. I'm a renter. It's a two-bedroom. I don't need a two-bedroom, but... Uh, regardless, um, I thought I had a heat pump because out, out in the back, right outside the back door, there is a, a big box sitting right beside the back door. Electric, you know, a big fan box looks just like a heat pump. Uh, I didn't ask enough questions. It's not a heat pump, it's just part of the air conditioning. Closest for are just um, a few kilometers away. like an evaporation box so it does not have a heat pump and it's electrical plateau, heat and air conditioning are electrical there's no monks. no natural gas Their in this area in well there is but not to this not to this house so it can get really expensive and I was really stressed out when I when I first retired, because then I found out the electric bill in this area, maybe everywhere, I don't know, was getting a 7% hike in January, so it's going to be pretty expensive, this January bill, and I'm so tired of being cold, I can't wait for spring to get here, and it's just around the corner, and I'll really be getting out of the house more once that happens. Go back a bit more, is that close enough? Yeah. So good. I love chicken noodle soup. As a result of these suspicions, temples have been destroyed and some monks imprisoned. Anyway, uh, what is taking place here is for China almost miraculous. retirement. I'm a little bit more Chinese comfortable Chinese with retiring now. To help rebuild the temple. I was starting they to feel like to I didn't deserve it and all that. And I but still kind of have those feelings. Religion. But it's getting better. I've got a few prayers and, and some uh, certainly I. I know I deserve it. I worked since 1979 when I got out of high school. That's when I started working. And, um, uh, <clears throat> you know, I've worked for like 43 years. And, uh, with virtually no time off, full time. So I absolutely deserve my social security. It's just a little bit of a trying to settle into it to get used to it. But that's getting better. Absolutely getting better. We'll be off now. You take your old truck and make it back up to the village? And of course. this apartment that I live in, it's actually a duplex. There's a the monk has neighbor every next door to, to me, concerned. but we don't share common wall. And um, speedometer may be new. The truck is this ancient. was built in 1977, so this heating and air conditioning and system, it's central heating and air, but it's the original from 1977, so it's about 45 years old, and when they can no longer fix these Probably systems, the up and down. so when the it breaks like down, it. they have to replace the whole thing, the so no to change gear. Drive the right they speed. won't replace it's it until easy. it's broken. So. You learn this by practice, by instinct. What can you do? I mean, you know, 
To save if I was a homeowner, as as possible, the I guess I wouldn't have that problem. Particularly risky. I never did. Downhill, he freewheels. Engine off, foot on the brake. I love documentaries like this. But at the foot of the hill, the climb up the next slope will take time and patience. The truck struggles on the ascent and slows to barely 10 kilometers an hour. Wow. The engine on the brink of a pretty slow. Heating. Uphill, the trick is a small homemade tap under the seat. You see this water tap? I use it to cool the engine from the tank that's on the roof. Without it, it would overheat, break down, and that would be the end. Yeah, that's a pretty tiny motor for that big a truck. That's not my system. No, it appears that it's something haywire with the video. I don't want to play World of Warships. Ugh, it should pass. So now they're in Tibet. I was trying to follow the along opposite the temple lies with the Google the Earth map, but Google Earth Today is a big doesn't day, work the too good the season. in China because they to don't. Extra money, Fong hunts for flying squirrels. They don't allow it there. They don't the have YouTube and stuff. As far as I know, that's what I've told. These parts, the weapon of choice, Google doesn't prosper. really exist there. In the valley, almost no one owns a firearm. The cartridges are far too expensive. <clears throat> this is how you carry a crossbow, you see. It has to be kept firmly against the body so it doesn't get caught in any branches, so that you can also run after the prey. To give their prey no chance of getting away, the hunters coat the arrows in poison. It's a quite natural poison made by crushing the leaves of a certain flower. The flower is picked in the mountains during the spring and then dried. It is highly toxic. Before handling it, the hunters make sure they have no cuts or wounds on their hands. When the poison reaches its target, there's no immediate effect. But ten minutes later, even if it's been barely touched, the animal will collapse and there's no way it will survive. Huh. All we need to do is pick it up. And are animals poisoned? Preparing for the hunt is a long and meticulous process. While his friends finish making the arrows, Fong goes on ahead, as it's his job to open up a path to their hunting cabin. Mm. First time I've had, I've been, I've been having just plain old chicken broth lately because I just didn't feel up to actually eating food. I mean, I was, I wasn't starving to death, but I was just having chicken broth and it seemed to just help. Yeah, machete and crack raise a shot. The remainder of the pub. It's a three-hour-long trek through the torrid jungle. Several flying bats. 
The, uh, the image is getting better Not on the mountain cam. The it updates like every 10 minutes or something. To stretch and it's starting to come clear. You can kind of see it a little bit. Meaning the bow will be far less accurate. Mm. Well, I won't be as precise as before. That will still work. The jungle is home to countless numbers of creatures, insects and invertebrates, some of which are dangerous, such as this leech which, once it has attached itself, can only be removed with salt. The snakes and other creatures that might be harmful, Fong has brought along a marvelous product that is meant to ward them off. It's a repellent. That's how seeing you splash it all over yourself. The product stems I don't from like Chinese medicine. Snakes and all that crap. Up here, they're venomous snakes. If you get bitten, your whole arm could rot in just a few minutes. Do many people get bitten? Oh, yeah, far too often. Oh. <laughs> now, ideally, you should spread this all over your skin. That's crazy. It stings and stinks. Now, I wouldn't like to jump. It's 7 o'clock at night, and the hunt oh, gets underway. Oh, there's a vehicle way. there. Can you see it in the picture now? To make the evening profitable, the hunters will need to kill at least 30 squirrels a night. Look, they're out. I saw one over there. Use your lamps. <coughs> 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 Excuse me. To lure the animal to fall imitates the Choke sound of the female. Heat. But the light from their lamps attracts unwanted attention. Look at Snake, it's huge. Get back, get back. Ah, oh, I don't like that. They'll need to tread carefully in the dark. Okay, just a little bit of broth left to go. So I will be back later on with my fried chicken dinner. And biscuit and baked beans. I also like it with cold saw. Anyway, we'll talk about that later on. So that's going to be it for this video. Gonna, a little bit.